Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Today in this service, we remember before God our late sovereign Queen Elizabeth II. We renew our trust and confidence in Christ, and we pray that together we may be one in him, through whom we offer our praises and prayers to the Father. Simple happenings that form the starting point of the life of Jesus, a man whose teachings have been handed down from generation to generation and have been the bedrock of my faith. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. But I shall not have strength to carry out this resolution alone unless you join in it with me, as I now invite you to do. I know that your support will be unfailingly given. God help me to make good my vow, and God bless all of you who are willing to share in it. And there comes the presentation to her of the Bible upon which she took her oath. Our gracious Queen, to keep your majesty ever mindful of the law and the gospel of God as the rule for the whole life and government of Christian princes, we present you with this book, the most valuable thing with the world afford. Here is wisdom, this is the royal law, these are the lively oracles of God. I hope that like me you will be comforted by the example of Jesus of Nazareth, who often in circumstances of great adversity managed to live an outgoing, unselfish and sacrificial life. He makes it clear that genuine human happiness and satisfaction lie more in giving than receiving, more in serving than in being served. We can surely be grateful that 2,000 years after the birth of Jesus, so many of us are able to draw inspiration from his life and message and to find in him a source of strength and courage. Jesus Christ lived obscurely for most of his life and never traveled far. He was maligned and rejected by many, though he had done no wrong. In his early 30s, he was arrested, tortured, and crucified with two criminals. His death might have been the end of the story, but then came the resurrection, and with it, the foundation of the Christian faith. Although we are capable of great acts of kindness, history teaches us that we sometimes need saving from ourselves from our recklessness or our greed. God sent into the world a unique person, neither a philosopher nor a general, important though they are, but a savior with the power to forgive. In the words of the Queen, God has sent into our world a saviour. God has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of his glory in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. As we acknowledge our human frailty, we call to mind our sins of word, deed and omission and confess them before God our Father. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
the Gospel of our Lord according to John. The reading is chapter 6, starting to read at verse 30, 35. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gave me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but rise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will rise them up at the last day. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Amen. Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. They were the words at the beginning of our Gospel reading this morning. You find these I am statement seven times. In fact, in our church, they appear on banners hanging on the pillars. Today, the words you heard follow that well-known piece of all scripture about the time Jesus fed the crowds with five loaves and two fish. Lots had happened in the weeks before he actually made this declaration, and still the people wanted more. This morning, we've been given just a small piece of the whole story. There is plenty more. Once we've completed this act of worship, why don't you go and read John's Gospel, chapter 6, just to remind yourselves. This Jesus, this Lord of life, this great I am, is the same Jesus who was so constant throughout the life of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. I, for one, have loved and respected this beautiful lady for my whole conscious life. There will be many who will feel the same. When the, news, when the news came of her going home to heaven, I was immediately taken back to the time of her 21st birthday, where it is recorded that she said, I declare before you, before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, I shall be devoted to your service, and the service of our great imperial family, to which we all belong. You know, by the grace of God, our Queen has fulfilled that promise through her wonderful long life. Her firstborn, our King, in his first speech said, that promise of lifelong service I renew to you all today. In the book, The Servant King, and the king she serves, in the foreword you find these words. In my Christmas broadcasts in 1952, I asked the people of the Commonwealth and Empire to pray for me as I prepared to dedicate myself to the service at my coronation. I have been and remain very grateful to you for your prayers and to God for his steadfast love. I have indeed seen his faithfulness. When asked what was the secret of her remarkable consistency and extraordinary contribution to nations, commonwealth and the global community, she was to say, I know just how much I rely on my faith to guide me through the good times and the bad. Each day is a new beginning. I know that the only way to live my life is to try to do what is right, to take the long view to give of my best in all that the day brings, and to put my trust in God. I draw strength from the message of hope in the Christian gospel. Now, in our gospel reading, Jesus tells us that crowds, that tells that crowd he is the bread of life. He also says that anyone who comes to him will never hunger nor thirst. And I sometimes wonder, did those crowds actually realise that Jesus wasn't speaking literally? He wasn't talking about food and drink that we consume. 
Rather, Jesus was speaking of our spiritual hunger and thirst. Each time we are called to remember this reading, we are called to ask ourselves what it is that we may hunger for. What is it that we may thirst for? And as we do, we're called to remember that if Jesus, through God's Spirit, is part of our lives, we will be spiritually satisfied. And I declare, as Queen Elizabeth said, that I draw strength from the message of hope in the Christian gospel. And I pray this is something that we can all do. And King Charles has pledged to do the same. Our well-loved Queen did plenty of Christmas broadcasts in her life. As children, we'd all sit around the Christmas dinner table, watching the steam coming off the turkey and the veg, and have to listen to the Queen's speech, always at 3pm. Family tradition was important. At the turn of the century, she was to tell us this. Christmas is the traditional, if not the actual, birthday of a man who was destined to change the course of our history, and today we are celebrating the fact that Jesus Christ was born 2,000 years ago. This is true millennium anniversary. The simple fact of Jesus' life gives us little clue as to the influence he was to have on the world. As a boy, he learned his father's trade as a carpenter. He then became a preacher, recruiting 12 supporters to help him. But his ministry only lasted a few years, and he himself never wrote anything down. In his early thirties, he was arrested, tortured and crucified with two criminals. His death might have been the end of the story, but then came the resurrection, and with it, the foundation of the Christian faith. Our beloved Queen was never, ever afraid to declare her dependence on Christ. In fact, She's shown us how to depend on him for everything. And I pray we can all try our best to follow her example. King Charles said Queen Elizabeth's was a life well lived. Now those words, they're found in a poem by an unknown author. And that goes like this. A life well lived is, pres is a precious gift of hope and strength and grace from someone who has made our world a brighter, better place. It's filled with moments sweet and sad, with smiles and sometimes tears, with friendships formed and good times shared and laughter throughout the years. A life well lived is a legacy of joy and pride and pleasure, a living, lasting memory our grateful hearts will treasure. The world has lost a special person. Our good father has called her to her heavenly rest. And when she comes to rise in glory and have a one-to-one -one with her heavenly father, he will certainly say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You know, Jesus declared lots of things. This morning we heard, I am the bread of life. Now, if our gracious, glorious, beloved, happy and giving Queen could depend on this, if King Charles can declare that he will do the same, well, my friends, so can we. Amen. The Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Mortals give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up 
believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. God of love, we thank you for the life of the Queen, for her service to our nation and for her faith in you. Be close to all of us who mourn that we may find comfort and hope in your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Everlasting God, we pray for our new King. Bless his reign with the life of our nation. Help us to work together so that truth and justice, harmony and fairness flourish amongst us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we just have a moment's silence as we bring before God anything we particularly wish to pray for today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. So we join in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.